Hey everyone, Victor is here and in this video I want to talk about this fun looking synthesis where we are starting with the 4-oxapentanoic acid and we are going to make the cyclic enone as our final product. As always, if you want to work through this synthesis before you see the answer, pause this video before I am going to start my preliminary analysis right now. So typically when we are looking at the final product and the answer doesn't just jump out and we don't see the clear strategy, we are going to use the retrosynthetic analysis. And in this case I can see that my final product here is the alpha beta unsaturated compound. We typically make those via the aldol condensation, so our starting material should be something like this. And in the last step of my synthesis, I am creating the double bond between these carbons. To make it a little bit easier to see which atoms are which, I am going to start by numbering my final product and then finding all the same carbons in my starting material for this aldol condensation. Now, at this point, I can see that this part of the molecule maps onto my starting material like so. So it makes it a little bit easier to see where things are going here. And I can see that I'm going to end up making this bond between carbons 5 and 6, most likely via reaction with some sort of organometallic compound. And since we are going to be working with organometallic compounds, that means that the carbonyl that we have over here on carbon number 2, that guy must be protected. So what I'm going to do here, I'm actually going to start right away by protecting my uh, ketone by using a simple acetal formation in the acidic media, giving me the following product. Now, here I can see that I have the carboxylic acid, and what I am trying to do here is to add a new carbon-carbon bond between my carbonyl and basically get rid of that OH, and there are multiple different ways how we could potentially do that. Probably the easiest one is going to be via the reaction with organolithium compounds. Because when it comes to the reactions with organometallics, organolithium compounds will be able to react with the carbonyls like carboxylic acids and actually do the nucleophilic attack after they deprotonate them, while something like organomagnesium or the Grignard reagents, they will just do the acid base chemistry and stop at that point. And if you want to learn more about this chemistry, I I will leave the link in the description below so you can check it out and see how it works for yourself. Now, at this point, I have created my key carbon-carbon bond, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to hydrolyze my acetal, releasing my carbonyl on carbon number two, and from here, we're going to do the uh, intramolecular aldol condensation, and there are a couple of ways how you can do it. You can do it in either acidic conditions, where we're going to use acid as a catalyst, list plus heat and we are going to remove water from this reaction or another option is to do that in basic conditions using sodium hydroxide or maybe some other base as a catalyst in this case and eventually getting to our final product. We could also use a mixed method where we start from the basic conditions and then switch our conditions midway and finish with the acidic conditions. So in other words, whichever method of the aldol condensation you like, that one is going to work here just fine. And that's how we're going to make our final product here. Now, suppose we didn't know about the way how organolithium compounds react with carboxylic acids. How would you do this reaction then? What would be your synthetic route in that case? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching. If you learned something new today, boop that like button and subscribe for more. Check out this video next and I will see you next time.